What's up dudes and dudes to the internet, my name is Seth and today we're going to be talking about the subclass abilities. All of them have actually been leaked due to the Chinese server of Trove. Yes, that's right. Now apparently a lot of this stuff is actually going to be uh, available on the PC test server for North American players uh, and European players as well. But for right now, all the information that I have is just the Chinese information. So of course, as we end up getting like stuff that's actually like in English rather than translated. Uh, I'll be able to do videos on all of that and cover all of that for you guys and gals. But for today, there, we're just gonna be focusing our attention on the subclasses. There's actually quite a few very exciting things. The new Shadow Tower boss has been revealed. Uh, there's also a new world portal, which actually is a portal. It's one crafting table that you interact with that you're going to be able to choose your Uber portal rather than being able to go to each individual Uber portal and stuff like that, right? So uh, again, all of that stuff we're gonna talk about in another video because for today, I want to focus our attention on the subclasses. So right here, we get to see our first picture of all the new subclass abilities. This, this isn't all of them. We'll go through them in a little bit, but uh, those of you that actually know the Chinese characters can end up translating it for yourselves. Uh, I'll talk about them in a little bit, but you can see that we've got the Fey, the Chloromancer, the Dino Tamer. Uh, not exactly sure what the next one is right there. Maybe it's the uh, Draco, but I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's the Revenant, actually, because we've got the Lunar Lancer right beside it. Uh, then we've got uh, that one's going to be the assassinate for the neon ninja uh, the image that's the fire image underneath that one is the draco that one's the draco and then the bomb is most likely the boomeranger uh, and then after that i'm assuming that that is the gunslinger maybe because they're kind of attacking down from up in the air and then one of the most misleading pictures I've ever seen is the knight's passive ability, which actually shows a character on a horse fighting. Now, first of all, there's no horses that actually look like that in Trove, but on top of that, there is no mounted combat. The only character that technically has mounted combat is the Dino Tamer. There is not going to be mounted combat. That is not going to be the passive of the knight. Uh, again, we'll talk about that in a little bit here. Then we've got the Tomb Raider. Pirate Captain, Shadow Hunter, Ice Sage, and then the Candy Barb as well. And all of these are going to end up showing up uh, kind of on your character menu. So I've seen another screenshot. I'll, I'll try and track it down for this video, but if I don't have it on my computer, I'm sorry, I lost it. Uh, in your character menu on the left side of your screen, you're going to see a little icon to show you the character class that you are subclassing. And then uh, on top of that, we've already taken a peek at this, but I just wanted to show you that you're also going to have a new character menu. This is going to be different on consoles, but for PC players, we're going to have a menu where we can select and organize our characters by level, power rank, uh, and then also you can see which character you have subclassed. So, for each of the different abilities, I'm going to go in order to the forum post that ended up translating it. Uh, I'm going to put a forum post in the description to this post itself. I, I just want to give a heads up that the actual reading is not necessarily family friendly, so just a heads up on that. But for the boomeranger, uh, and for each of these passive abilities, we're going to start with the boomeranger. You're going to end up getting a stat. So you're going to end up getting a stat that is going to apply to your character. In this case of the boomerang, uh, boomeranger, you're going to get an extra 2% critical damage as well as the passive ability that's going to end up coming with it. Now, we don't know the execution of these abilities in game or how they're going to end up looking uh, because with the boomeranger in particular, his subclass ability is going to be heals you when you are low HP. Now, I wish that would actually say a percentage or a stat value or something like that but honestly speaking trove is not a very complex game uh immediately for myself this just sounds absolutely useless because death defying already takes care of that but for those of you that don't rock death defying maybe you can end up finding this to be a useful ability uh but honestly speaking what most of trove is for the end game is trying to build more damage right so you don't really you know personally i don't really see it as being useful however uh the one thing that the devs did end up talking about when they mentioned the boomerangers ability uh the last time that we ended up talking about subclass abilities is they said that it was very very cute so the in-game application might look cooler than the actual text definition of it. So for the boomeranger ability, I'm assuming it's going to be maybe a cute little chicken that's going to end up healing you or something like that. Honestly, I don't know. We'll see what ends up happening, but hopefully it's something that actually looks exciting, even if the ability itself is very, very, like, just kind of like, 
Oh, that's it, right? So we've got the Chloromancer up next is uh, they're going to end up increasing your max HP by 1%. Uh, honestly, useless uh, as far as like these little percentage values are are, are concerned. But uh, I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, right? And then the passive you're going to get is while you are being attacked, you have a chance to reflect damage. So I don't know whether or not not that means thorns directly, where it's going to reflect the damage back at the enemy, or if it's just going to completely negate the damage that the enemy ends up throwing at you. But it's while you are being attacked, it has a chance for it to end up applying. I don't know if it's uh, uh, the stat value is going to be based off of anything. Honestly, Trove is not really one type of, uh, like that type of a complex game, so it's not really like it's going to be, oh, this stat value is based on your max health or based on your health regen or something like that. It's probably just straight up going to be a random chance of actually triggering this effect. Now, uh, that could be okay. I could see that working for maybe a candy barb or a tankier build or, uh, you know, maybe even a tomb razor. But honestly speaking, once we get to the revenant ability, that's probably going to be the, uh, Coupe de Grace for most of the tank builds and stuff like that, right? So for the Dino Tamer, we've got 1% to increase attack speed, which ultimately means that it's useless for the Shadow Hunter as far as that stat value is concerned. But otherwise, the passive is going to be have a chance to root your enemy while you deal damage. Now, rooting an enemy pretty much is like stunning an enemy. It's going to root them into the ground, right? Um, so it's based on dealing crit damage, which that in itself could be very, very useful for the Shadow Hunter. Hunter, just because of the fact that you're shooting a constant stream of crit damage if you have a high enough crit chance, right? That potentially this could be very overpowered and trigger constantly. But at the same time, you could always press your number one ability with the Shadow Hunter. Uh, in which case, most of us that actually mean the Shadow Hunter barely ever do this and rarely even need to. So again, this ability is kind of in the middle of whether or not you take it just because it's better than nothing, but it's not necessarily going to be useful. So I'm really, really curious what the actual practical use of most of these abilities is going to end up being in game because this is just the text definition of them. It could end up being quite different. So for the Revenant, we already called this one, right? Uh, you're going to take minus 1% uh, of damage taken. So you're going to have reduced damage by uh, taken by 1%. But your basic attacks have a chance to taunt the enemy. Now, this in uh, lies finally letting every character in Trove potentially be a tank. Uh, now, not necessarily just because of their health values or defensive values or anything like that, but most of all, just because of the fact that you can finally taunt enemies that's something that's actually needed to be in the game for a very very long time and even then i'm very skeptical about this stat because the ai in trove is very lackluster it's not really anything impressive and in a lot of cases even as the revenant you'll be shield bashing until the cows come home and the enemies will not actually be lured to you because the taunt effect in the game doesn't work very well that, you know, that's just my own personal experience with that. So hopefully it'll end up working out okay. I could see it working very well with the uh, Tomb Razor because your basic atta uh, attack is a chance to taunt an enemy and the Tomb Razor is another character where he's got a constant stream. Draco could potentially end up using it as well, but you'd have to build your Draco as being a little bit tanky. And then maybe you could trigger your ult to kind of save yourself because you get that extra, uh, you know, extra buff to your character. Lunar Lancers is a very weird one. So it's going to add 10 AD. I guess attack damage, just raw attack damage, just 10. Um, but it's also going to have a little chance. Uh, this is just a rough translation, right? But it's going to have a chance to transform your character, which will also give you uh, a little bit of your Lunar Lancer stats while you're fighting. So this potentially is a real big one. Now, I don't like the fact that it's a chance to transform because it means that immediately it's unreliable. And that's the whole thing about Trove that unfortunately I don't really like as far as the end game is concerned, like take the Chloromancer's class gem ability, for example. It's very, very powerful, but I don't like the fact that it's random. Random means that you can't count on it in a fight, you know? And uh, as far as Trove's random is concerned, it's pretty crazy. So. 
That one's actually a very unique ability, probably the most unique subclass ability out of all of them, but it sounds very, very strange. Now, the fact that you actually will gain some of the stat values from your Lunar Lancer tells me that that could potentially end up being a lot of damage, like really. But at the same time, if you end up just lazily transforming into lunacy mode as say a ranged character, and then suddenly you're a melee character, then, you know, it's only going to end up working with a handful of uh, classes. So the Neon Ninja, you're going to end up getting one to your jump, and you're also going to have the passive of have a chance to deal bonus damage to enemies that are under 20% HP. This is only, only going to be avail uh, like effective in Shadow Towers. Potentially, this could be a huge game changer. Like, for, for Shadow Tower bosses to get to 20% uh, HP and just get absolutely annihilated by whatever character is actually rocking this passive is insane. Now, that said, most of the people that are at the end game, they just obliterate the Shadow Tower bosses anyways. It's not going to make a difference whether they're at 20% HP or not. But for most average players, this could potentially be really, really good with the Dino Tamer, uh, you know, or the uh, Gunslinger I could see it being useful for. Maybe if you're early into U9, it could be useful, but again, you know, it's it's just kind of bonus damage to an enemy that's at 20% HP, and 20% HP for most people at U9 means the enemy's already dead. You know, it's it's not really that useful. Now, for Shadow Hunter, it could be useful as well because that's constant damage at the you know constant extra damage, I guess I should say. The Draco is going to have a 1% cooldown reduction to all of your abilities, which yeah, that's okay. I guess you could kind of use that passive with the Dino Tamer, but it's not ultimately not that useful. Uh, but you're going to have a chance to burn an enemy. Now, this one has me very intrigued because to have an enemy just end up getting burned, to me, translates into more damage. And more damage, you know, that, you know, that is just what it's all about, right? Like, especially if you're maining Shadow Hunter, it means that you want to just have that extra damage. Or even if you're maining the Neon Ninja and your Shuriken is going through all the enemies, that that's where I could see it being more useful, actually, is because the Shuriken is going to uh, attack all of the enemies. Uh, which, by the way, I want to make a point <clears throat> about the Dino Tamer's ability, ha excuse me, having the chance to root an enemy that ability in itself is absolutely useless with the Neon Ninja because his class gym ability, the Shuriken, already is going to snare all the enemies, right? Sorry about that one, folks. Water ended up going down the wrong tube there. So for the Fey, you're going to end up getting 101 flying movement speed. So this, I, I don't know whether or not this is going to be a boost on your current flying speed because if it is, it means that uh, the uh, elemental air dragon might end up actually being a very, very fast flying mount, so long as it ends up augmenting on top of. Now, if it gives you the set value of 101 flying speed, then ultimately that passive is useless. Uh, but the ability that you're going to get is you have a chance to stun an enemy when you deal crit damage. Now, this one has me very interested, uh, you know, especially for the Shadow Hunter, because that means that you potentially would negate any use for your number one ability because any of the enemies that you end up tagging with your, uh, you know, machine gun would end up getting stunned. Uh, also, I could see this being very useful for the Dino Tamer. You would throw down your net, which already potentially ends up stopping enemies in the first place, but I would love to see if this ends up actually proccing off of your Dino Babies or even the Tomb Razor, you know, for a damage build, maybe. All of your little skeleton buddies, which somehow be able to actually uh, trigger a crit damage, and then they would be able to take this passive and stun an enemy. It could give you a little bit more crowd control, uh, especially again with the Tomb Raider or a Pirate Captain would be another one that I could potentially see this being very good for. So for the Gunslinger, we've got plus one to jump, but you deal bonus damage if you are in the air. This is another one that I see being absolutely, like, this is probably going to be one of the best ones for the Shadow Hunter because the majority of the time you're jumping in the air and shooting down your machine gun anyway because you don't need energy on the uh, shadow hunter right 
And uh, again, you know, most of the builds that I'm going to be talking about is just like the Shadow Hunter, uh, Neon Ninja, maybe the Lunar Lancer a little bit here. Some of the end game classes that you actually end up using. Uh, and uh, again, with the Shadow Towers, you know, for the most part, a lot of this stuff is very underwhelming. It's very cool, but it's very underwhelming. And in a lot of ways, it's not really that useful. But the Gunslinger passive of dealing bonus damage if you're in the air you know, for ranged classes, that's a really big deal because that's just solid extra damage. Not a chance for extra damage, solid extra damage. And, you know, for the Shadow Hunter especially, you're jumping in the air half the time anyways just because you want to trigger your ult and get it to work properly. So for the Knight, which again has the picture of uh, a character actually with mounted combat, uh, it's going to give you one to your flask capacity, but it's going to increase your movement speed if you ride a non flyable mount now because it says you know at first increase your movement speed immediately makes me think of the neon ninja rage speed build suddenly you're gonna be 10 times faster but it says if you ride a non-flyable mount meaning that you wouldn't ride a dragon you would have to ride just a normal mount now for any class except for the Neon Ninja, this could potentially actually boost up a lot of characters as far as being faster farmers. I think that this could end up being potentially very, very useful because suddenly your favorite character, let's say you're playing as the Revenant, uh, suddenly you might actually be able to keep up with some of the era characters depending on the amount of movement speed that you're going to end up getting from this, right? Because if it's just boosting your movement speed to the same uh, as wings, then it's absolutely Absolutely useless and it should be thrown in the garbage because otherwise why would you end up going in your mount instead of using your wings right uh, the tomb razor is going to give you 0.1% to your crit hit that's useless uh, but you're going to have a chance to spawn one minion when an enemy dies a chance to spawn one minion when an enemy dies and it specifically says that the maximum number of minions is one that is is useless like I, i'm sorry to say it really really is unless the minion itself is going to be something more like the beamer ally uh if it's just going to be the tomb raiser's little skeleton minions that is the most useless ability i've ever seen because those little skeleton dudes don't do anything you know uh, and unless you could have that subclassed with another ability so that the minion could end up proccing something maybe then but having one skeletal minion is just not going to end up working so hopefully it's not a skeletal minion maybe it's going to be the same as his alt maybe the minion itself is going to end up being very very powerful but expect the minion to be the same as the tomb razor where it's going to slowly end up despawning so Maybe this would end up being helpful with a kill 30 enemies, but again, with the maximum minion number being one rather than a higher minion number, it, it, it just makes it useless in my mind. So for the pirate captain, this one's actually very interesting. You're going to end up getting 10 to your magic find. Not really that useful, but the passive ability has a chance to spawn a bullet from the sky that will deal damage when you attack an enemy. Another one that could potentially be very, very good with the Shadow Hunter, but most of all, I see this being very, very good with the Neon Ninja because the Shadow Hunter, you gotta remember, uh, you know, is single target. He's got a little bit of AOE on his uh, on his machine gun, but for the most part, you can only damage the enemies that are right in front of you, right? With the Neon Ninja, he's gonna tag all of them, or even the Lunar Lancer triggering his ult. I could see this being very, very useful because that's just just extra damage right there. Uh, again, with the Neon Ninja constantly using your shuriken and it phasing through all the enemies. Now, again, the whole thing that you do have to consider is while I'm getting excited about the idea of having a Neon Ninja shuriken shoot through enemies and maybe potentially trigger a bullet from the sky coming down to kill everything, the Neon Ninja already one-shots everything with his shuriken anyway, so this is not really going to be that useful, if at all, for people that are actually at the end game. I, I feel that in a lot of ways, these subclass abilities are for people that are kind of just getting in uh, to the U9, if not a lot earlier, because we'll see what ends up happening. 
but when are you going to have access to these subclass abilities? If you can use them so long as you have two classes unlocked, then these are awesome because these are really going to help out a lot of the beginning players at the beginning of the game. Even the healing uh, effect of the boomeranger ability where it heals you when you're low HP, that's going to be fantastic for people that are at the beginning of the game and don't actually have access to deathifying or some of the better flasks, right? So for the Shadow Hunter, you're going to get uh, 10 attack points, which uh, I'm guessing is just going to be attack points to towards physical or magical depending but <clears throat> Maybe this was ill, like improperly translated, but when you deal magic damage to enemies, it has a chance to deal extra damage. And it's going to be a damage over time effect rather than just raw straight damage. So magic damage, that, that confuses me because the Shadow Hunter is physical damage. And in a lot of ways, something like this, I feel... Honestly, the devs really gotta get with the times. They gotta get rid of the whole magic and physical damage and just make it one raw type of damage stat. Uh, I think that would make things a lot easier as far as the code is concerned. Uh, and with uh, the new players coming into the game, I think it would make things a lot less confusing because you wouldn't believe how many people uh, that are just brand new to Trove, you know, a lot of us already are sitting here going, Dude, it's so obvious, but for new players that just start out, a bow doing physical damage uh, or the ranged weapons actually being magic damage doesn't make sense to a lot of players. You know, uh, Pirate Captain, for example, makes sense to actually be physical damage rather than magic damage just because a shotgun kind of is associated with physical damage rather than the, you know, rather than the magic, right? But in any case, when you deal magic damage to enemies, it has a chance to deal extra damage. Kind of sounds a little bit like a lazy passive, but we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, maybe this could end up being very good for the Fate Trickster. Uh, I'm also thinking maybe with the Ice Sage, because your right click is going to end up triggering and proccing all of the different enemies and stuff. Maybe even without the classroom ability and just having the AoE Ice come down on the enemies. Maybe. Uh, or with the Gunslinger, that could potentially be very, very useful just because extra damage while you're triggering your ult. I mean... I'm down for that, right? So the Ice Sage is going to have 10 attack points as well, and this ability is going to uh, produce a shield when you, uh, wait, produce a shield when you do attack damage. So I guess when you damage an enemy, or maybe it's when an enemy attacks you, it's going to trigger, but the shield can absorb damage from an enemy, and the maximum amount that it's going to heal or, or absorb is 5% of your max HP. Now, this could be okay if you're doing a tank build, say with you're using a Revenant or the Tomb Raider or something like that, or even the Candy Bar. But again, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that most of the enemies at the late game end up hitting you so hard that that's where Death Defying becomes one of the requirements because Death Defying, uh, the reason why I'm, you know, so about using Death Defying, especially even if you're a tank, is because Every time Death Defying triggers, that's like, uh, what is it, like 40 or 60 percent more to your health. So it's kind of like you have an even bigger health pool, right, for every time it triggers. Now, the only reason I'm getting into this is 5 percent of your max HP is absorbed from enemies. You know, survivability is not so much of a problem. Only in Shadow Towers is survivability a big issue. And even then, I personally would have liked to see the passive of having the extra damage from the shield rather than just having the damage absorption. Because I'm guessing it's going to operate the same as the Ice Sage's shield itself, where if you end up getting hit once, the shield's going to disappear and then it's going to have to re-trigger. So... Again, we'll see what happens. Uh, I could see this being potentially useful for tanks, uh, especially if you're in the early parts of the game. Maybe you're playing on Tomb Raider and you're not doing enough damage to kill the enemies before you end up surviving, but you've already got Banshee's Boon anyway. Uh, it could end up being useful for the knight, uh, but again, the knight is going to end up having a complete overhaul in an update after the Shadow Tower one. And, and then last but not least, we got the Candy Barb with plus five to the stability. Uh, and the passive ability is going to, I, I, I we kind of called this last time we talked about the Candy Barb ability, but it's going to have a chance to get buffs when you deal damage to an enemy. So uh, the buff is going to either be increased movement speed, Rage speed build, here we go. Uh, attack damage, uh, or not attack damage, attack speed, again, being very helpful for the Neon Ninja, or it's going to drop candy for healing. So 
that is probably the only passive subclass ability from any of the classes that straight up is the sub, uh, not the sub, the passive ability of the candy barbarian because his passive ability is going to end up triggering the candy that ends up either giving you uh, movement speed, attack speed, or just drop candy for healing. Except his candy, I don't think actually has a movement speed. Maybe it's just attack speed uh, or the healing. But in any case, that in itself, is that going to end up being applied to just your one specific character or is it going to be applied to everybody around? And in a lot of cases with the subclass abilities, are they going to end up actually being a group ability that's going to end up helping everybody? Now, that said, the fact of the matter is that all of these abilities, even if only working with one specific character rather than moving with all your friends and stuff like that, potentially can end up being very, very overpowered and synergized very well with other characters that might end up taking a couple different builds so i do think that it's very interesting i just do feel that a lot of these abilities are very underwhelming because uh, again with the candy bar passive the movement speed can potentially be useful for Ice Sage, for example. You can end up being a little bit faster, depending on how much the movement speed is. Lunar Lancer might be able to, might be able to keep up with the Neon Ninja Rage speed build as far as farming is concerned. I don't know, we'll see, but that attack speed makes it useful for the, uh, useless for the Shadow Hunter, useless for the Lunar Lancer because you're just spamming your number one over and over and that's not affected by attack speed. Uh, and then there's also just the healing in general, which again, you rarely ever end up needing to heal when you're out in adventuring and you're kind of at the end game. So we'll see what ends up happening with all of this stuff, folks. Uh, let me know what you all think is gonna be a good class combination in the comment section down below. For myself personally, I main the shadow hunter and the neon ninja so i know them the best uh as far as all these other abilities being uh you know maybe maybe there secretly is a god build that i don't see right here because it would end up working with the knight or the fey trickster or one of the characters that i don't really main uh as much as the other ones i know a lot about the other characters but for the most part my experiences with them is very minor and i get a lot of my information and feedback from you beautiful people right so let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. I do still think that this is absolutely amazing and very, very exciting even if a lot of the abilities are going to be very underwhelming for the end game because as far as Trove's end game is concerned I'm only looking at like a couple of abilities that are going to end up increasing your raw damage because that's all it's really about right survivability maybe would end up coming into play with the shadow towers uh, I guess that could end up being okay but again let's let's refer back to the boomerang or ability heals when heals you when you are low HP how often is that going to end up triggering? I really, really hope that there's going to be a better, more descriptive uh, explanation in game when these actually get to the end, uh, get into the game, because otherwise, what's the percentage? How much is it going to end up healing me? How often is it going to be able to proc? And uh, honestly, what's going to be the cooldown? Time will tell, we'll just have to find out. Thanks for watching everybody, very much appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe for more daily content. Sign Aura and stay epic.